each organ is an independent entity let us take the case of stomach first of all it has to be well protected so it has to be covered then it has to move to digest or churn the food so there has to be a moving type of tissue then there has to be supply of energy so that means oxygen and food has to be also supplied the hair also and lastly it has to get instructions from the brain to do whatever its function is so which means that every organ is made up of different tissues now first type of tissue that we are going to consider is the epithelial tissue the word epi means above so that means this name has been taken from its location epi means above so this tissue is present above what does that mean it covers the internal and external organs internal and external organs now because it is a covering tissue that means their protection has to be complete so it is a continuous layer then what if there were gaps between the cells then the protection will not be as good so that means the cells are tightly packed and no intracellular spaces intercellular spaces no intercellular spaces now if it is going to be so tightly packed then whatever movement has to take place even that will not take place for example sweat oozes out of the skin how will that ooze out skin also breathes how will oxygen go in so that means there has to be a an a, you know facility for the movement of the material which means the cells are permeable so the epithelial tissue is found in lining of mouth lining of kidney tubules alveoli of lungs and so on lining of intestine and the skin so mainly you can keep in your mind that epithelial tissue is the covering tissue another feature about the epithelial tissue is that the shape of the cell varies so you can say variable shape now let us see what are the various shapes of cells squamous squamous epithelial tissue means that the cells are flat thin delicate so it will look like something like this with no thickness your cheek cells are like that very little thickness is there this depicts the thickness so that is why we call them flat and where are they found lining of the mouth lining of the esophagus and the skin now in the case of skin especially palms and soles there is lot of wear and tear but it never happens that they are not covered by skin how does that happen because constantly it is being replaced now how does that happen you see at the base of these epithelial tissue there is a basement membrane which means between the muscles and 
the epithelial tissue, there is a basement membrane. Now, this first layer it keeps on dividing and as a result many layers of cells are produced. Normally, epithelial tissue is single layered, but in this case many layers get produced and so it is called stratified. And this helps in the replacing the worn out tissue. So, that is why in the case of palms and soles, there is not simple squamous epithelium, but stratified. Now, what happens if the shape is not flat? Sometimes the cells are elongated like this. This epithelial tissue is called pyramidal. And where are they found? In the intestine. Sometimes these cells have hair like structures, very tiny hair like structures, and these structures are called cilia, as in the case of respiratory tract. Such an epithelial tissue is called ciliated epithelial tissue. Now, what is the role of cilia? When cilia move, they also push substances like mucus. So, that is why they are present in respiratory tract, so that mucus does not get accumulated. Another kind of shape is cube like. Like this which means equal length, breadth and thickness. These cuboidal cells make cuboidal epithelial tissue. Cuboidal epithelial tissue is found in the lining of the kidney tubules. Sometimes, these cells make an infolding, they get folded inside and form a multicellular gland. This is called glandular epithelial tissue. And these glands help in the secretion, like in the case of salivary glands. So, now if we have to sum up what are the functions of epithelial tissue, what will we say? Main function is protection, because it is a covering tissue. In the case of glandular epithelium, it also secretes. So, second function is secretion. 